Welcome back to Pepsi Sports Saturday. Pleased to be joined by former Buckeye star, former NBA great Lawrence Funderburk here. Uh, thank goodness we're sitting down because this would be just embarrassing to be standing and looking up. You get that a lot, though. I do. I get it a lot. <laughs> I get it a lot. Great, great to have you. And you, we're, we're old friends. We, we, uh, we, we are, used to man. work together here at the station to it's do great, some Buckeye. It's great, it's great to see you, man. You know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm, it's, it's a pleasure to be back. I think people really enjoy hearing you talk about not only basketball, but other things, including economics. We're going to get into that in just a little bit with a book that Lawrence wrote. Let's start with Ohio State. Your career at Ohio State was something else. You guys were a pretty powerful team. You played with some excellent players. Take me back through your career at Ohio State, and as you now look back at it, what that experience really did for you in your life. Yeah, you know, I had some controversy because I, I transferred from Indiana to right. Ohio State, and I always say, you know, half the Buckeye fans wanted me to be here because Trey Lee and Perry Carter were exiting, right. and the other half said, hey, let's, let's give him a, a shot. And then, obviously, coming in, we had that great year where we went to the Final Eight, lost to the Fab Five mm -hmm. from the team up north, uh, had a great run, and then uh, two years kind of struggled a little bit here and there, and then, uh, obviously, I uh, got drafted in the second round, 51st pick by the Sacramento Kings. But the thing I'm most proud of is, is getting my diploma. I think that is something that I, I take a lot of pride in. It definitely prepared you for your post-basketball career. And again, we're gonna get into that. Um, uh, let's talk about Ohio State as it stands right now. It's been fascinating to watch what's happened over the past year with the program, uh, with that modest departure. Mm -hmm. Chris Holtman comes in and takes over. And what we've seen so far, uh, I would call it somewhat inspiring. I think what he's done with the program is, is uh, uh, maybe even a little bit more than what a lot of people would have expected. Give me your thoughts on what Ohio State went through, your relationship with Thad, and what you've seen the program develop into. Yeah, I had a pretty close relationship with Thad. I was around the program, uh, did programs, uh, financial programs for uh, the basketball team. Uh, so I knew him pretty good. Uh, Coach Holtman, I, I really like him, I like what he's doing in terms of the enthusiasm. I think guys are wanting to play, and I think that's half the battle. Uh, and you see it on their faces that they're having fun. And uh, I think that's great. And uh, really, I think it's been, I don't think so much of, as a surprise, Coach Holtman is, is had a, he has an outstanding record, but I think it's been a surprise in terms of how they've been able to jail in a new system. I think that's been a surprise for many fans. Yeah, I think that's probably the better way to put it because you don't know how those transitions are gonna go. Sometimes they can be downright painful. In this case, They've responded very well. It doesn't hurt having a guy like Keita Bates Diop mm -hmm. on the floor for you, coming back from what he went through a year ago, hurt almost all year. What do you see out of him? Is he a unique figure, an NBA type figure who can maybe spur this team to something unique? Yeah, absolutely. The the, the player that uh, I compare him to, and most people don't, is uh, Derek McKee. I don't know if you know. Remember Derek McKee played for the Pacers, kind of a. Never smiled, never, never was sad. You never knew whether he was having a great game or a bad game. He just kind of had that. And he was a, a, a multi-dimensional player. He can play the three, the four. Sometimes he can play the two. And I, I compared him. He's not as tall. Derek was about 6'10". I think Kata, Kata is probably about 6'8". Mm -hmm. But I like the way he plays. As he goes, so goes the team. Mm -hmm. So I think, that's a, I think that's a good analysis. Uh, one of the reasons you're here and uh, one of the reasons that I wanted people to, to see what you do, you do so much work. From a financial standpoint, you're a, you're a numbers guy, you're a money guy, you're a planning guy, mm -hmm. and uh, you've written several books. This is your third book you've got mm -hmm. out. This book is called Socio Psychonomics. Don't let the title right. intimidate you, mm -hmm. uh, because the, the theme of this book is similar to what your other books have been, in mm -hmm. that financial responsibility is still a huge issue, and you help, I know you've dealt with former athletes before right. who, do, who deal with that. Take me through what this book is entitled to do. Well, you know, it's kind of my story. I, I wrote this book. Yeah, it kind of looks like a textbook, but it's, it's written in a way where I'm talking to you where anyone can understand. I wanted to write a practical book. Even as a certified financial planner, no one's going to read a technical book. You know, I wouldn't want to read it. But I think this really speaks to the heart of, of every social class. The poor is how I grew up. I grew up on welfare. The middle class, how my wife grew up. And then obviously playing in the NBA, you're around a lot of affluent uh, individuals. You learn there are some unique differences and nuances and I always say that a person's socio-economic filter is shaped by their upbringing, their life experiences, also their mentors and that this book really says this is who I am, I don't like who I am, I want to get better and it provides practical advice from a comprehensive financial planning perspective. I think that's the key, comprehensive financial planning in our country, you know, we need to get people more educated and up to speed here because we're the gap is getting wider and wider between the haves and the have-nots. Mm -hmm. I'm very alarmed by that. This book, I think, can, can make a lot of headway. I really believe that. If somebody wants to get a hold of this book, where do they go? Yeah, they go to Mr. Fundy. Mr. Fundy. Fundy is my nickname, so if you know me, Fundy. So Mr. 
mrfundy.com to learn more about this book. There's some excerpts there and you can learn a lot more about what we offer. We offer a lot in Central Ohio and I'm really, I'm really just passionate about helping people. That's just my goal, my life's work. As a man of faith, I just want to help people. That's, yeah. that's my goal in life. Uh, that's a great goal to have. And I already just feel smarter holding the book. Okay, you got to apply it though. I mean, I don't <laughs> understand that, but I'm saying that's yeah. a head start. That's right, that's exactly right. It's that's right. But it's great to see you, as Thank always. You. And uh, you. congrats on everything you've accomplished and continued success. All right, appreciate on book it. Book number three. Man. Thank you. Go Bucks, go Bucks. Lawrence Funderburg joining us. Audrey, let's go back to you.